An F5 tornado is one of the strongest and most catastrophic natural disasters that can occur. Winds can reach hundreds of miles an hour. Storms can stretch for miles. Its path of destruction is absolute. Buildings vaporize. Trees are uprooted. Vehicles are swept up and carried miles into the sky before being thrust back down to the ground. An F5 tornado has been referred to as the finger of God. Survival is no guarantee. Survival is a miracle. But for the people of Joplin, Missouri, survival wasn't left to fate or chance. Luck had nothing to do with it. What happened in Joplin was nothing short of a miracle. That day, the town witnessed divine intervention. On Sunday, May 22nd, 2011, an F5 tornado ravaged the town of Joplin. 158 people lost their lives. 1,150 people were injured, and their town was in ruin. Whole neighborhoods were gone. Houses, department stores, businesses. The tornado reached a maximum width of 1.6 kilometers and laid waste to $2.8 billion worth of damage. The tornado only lasted 38 minutes. Once the storm dissipated, the people of Joplin scrambled to find their loved ones, tried to salvage whatever they could from the wreckage, the wreckage that was once their home. Shock gripped them, but so did hope. Hope that even though their town was in ruin, that some divine entity had spared their lives. The talk of these beings started as a whisper, but then quickly began to spread like wildfire. Stories of winged beings saving people from certain death. Scores of town people stood in shock, having just beaten certain death, finding themselves in situations where their death was imminent, but somehow they beat all the odds and came out of the disaster almost unharmed. Children all over Joplin were talking about the butterfly people. Beautiful humanoid creatures with butterfly wings that not only protected them, but also ushered those that didn't survive up into the sky. The story spread to hospitals, shelters, waiting rooms. More and more people, mostly small children, shared their stories of the butterfly people. A young boy and his father were in a car when it got caught in the tornado and they were being whipped around. All of a sudden, they saw another car flying towards them. Death was almost certain, but death never came. In fact, the car never hit them and seemed to have been moved out of the way all on its own. The little boy told his dad that two butterfly people were holding the other car back. The father never saw the butterfly people, but he did see how the other car moved out of the way. He said it was a miracle. Another little boy was found out in a field by a sheriff six miles from his home. The sheriff checked him and he was perfectly fine. Not one single scratch on him. He learned from the little boy that he lived in an area of the town that was hit the hardest. When he asked how he got to the field, the little boy said, the angels brought me here and set me down here. As these stories came in, more and more people, especially the children, started sharing their stories too. A woman rushed home with her seven kids and hid in a small closet. All they could do was pray for safety. When the tornado hit, it ripped the roof off of their house. Her daughter's glasses shattered on her face. They thought they wouldn't survive. Then her son looked up and said there was a woman in a white dress with butterfly wings and she was covering the hole in the roof. Even as the debris of their house was hitting this butterfly woman, she still protected them. The tornado passed and they were dumbfounded to see their entire house was destroyed, except for the closet that they were hiding in. It was literally the only part of their house that was left standing. Another daughter and mother were outside when the storm hit. A car was launched into the air and headed straight for them. She grabbed her daughter, trying to shield her as best as she could, but the car never came down on them. 
Then her daughter asked, didn't you see the butterfly protecting us? That little girl also said she could see butterfly people carrying people through the sky. Every time someone would tell of their unexplainable survival, they would also describe the entities as butterflies. Butterfly people helping people around them, shielding them from harm, carrying people through the sky, intervening when all hope was lost. A little boy named Eli was blown out of his hiding spot. His parents found him in the wreckage that used to be their home. He was wrapped up like a burrito in a green rug. It wasn't their rug. In fact, they have no idea where the rug even came from or how he got into it. But Eli told them the butterfly people put him in there. Pastor Wormuth recounted his experience that night, where he and some of the residents took shelter in the church and went down to the basement for safety. They were all trapped when all four walls of the church collapsed into the basement. They were saved by six very large men that none of them had ever seen before. They lifted the walls away and the survivors walked out. Then those men walked away, saying they had more people to dig out. They weren't rescue workers. In fact, when the actual rescue workers arrived, they were dumbfounded by how the churchgoers even got out. They all saw the six men and all their stories matched. The rescue workers were in disbelief. Six men couldn't have lifted those walls. They were just too heavy. Another thing about that church that collapsed that's fascinating, the only thing that didn't collapse was the cross outside that was left standing. People from different religions, ages, socioeconomic backgrounds, they all saw the same thing, and they all reported white lights around them. A father and his two sons were trapped in the tornado's winds, and they were unable to find any cover. They were covered by the tornado. The father described the winds as so intense that the soles of his shoes were ripped off. But somehow, all three of them stayed grounded. They weren't hurt at all. The father was in disbelief. He couldn't even fathom a reason that they survived. Until a few days later, when he talked to his sons, they both described tiny people that looked like butterflies that hovered over them during the tornado. These are the people that they believe protected them. Yet another little girl described the same thing when the tornado passed right over the car that she and her father were in. She claimed there were tiny little fairies in the car and they were there only while the tornado passed directly over them. Lage Grigsby was actually taken to the morgue when his body was found. He and his cousin Mason were both thrown more than 300 feet across the Home Depot parking lot when their grandparents' truck was hit by the tornado. Mason was impaled by a metal rod. If that rod had went an inch in either direction, she would have died. It went through her right shoulder, broke seven ribs, and punctured a lung. Any further over, it could have severed her spine. In the other direction, it could have impaled her liver. She's a miracle. Her cousin, Lage, suffered near fatal head injuries before he was thrown from the truck. Yet somehow, they both survived. It was actually an ER nurse named Tracy Dye that found Lage in the morgue. She'd heard about the devastation the tornado had caused and rushed to the hospital to help. She went to the morgue first and just happened to touch Lage's arm. He woke up and screamed out. Tracy ran to get a doctor and they got him out of the morgue. She stayed with him until his surgery that lasted six hours. Mason saw the butterfly people with her and her cousin that day. She has no doubt in her mind that they were angels. As the storm approached, their grandmother had urged them to pray for safety, and they did. Mason saw the butterfly people just before the storm hit and felt them touch her shoulder after she was injured. 
I thought it was Lage, she said. But when I turned, I saw two angels in robes, one with brown hair and one with blonde hair. It was kind of calming. I knew God was with us, and he'd either take us to be with him or leave us to do something great. Lage and Mason were only two of 25 surgeries performed that night. All 25 of these surgeries were considered emergency surgeries. They were described as life literally hanging in the balance. 1,750 patients were treated the first night. The power was run off generators. No phones, no internet, only a limited supply of water. One of the nurses helping also saw the butterfly people. She saw them wrapping her wings around people to help comfort them and protect them. She described them as larger than humans, but with wings. She treated a man with a wooden stake in his chest, although there was nothing she could do for him. A butterfly person was there comforting him the entire time. When he died in that nurse's arms, the butterfly person was standing with them. She said she saw many butterfly people walking around that night. Another survivor that experienced the butterfly people was Emily Huddleston. She was 13 when the tornado hit and on her way back from her brother's high school graduation. The tornado blew the car several blocks and her thigh was impaled by pieces of debris. The wound was to the bone. It took two months for her to recover. Once she left the hospital, she started noticing butterflies seemed to be drawn to her. They would land on her all the time. She told interviewers, I think it's a sign the angels were there that night. We're being watched over. Now the town is rebuilding, mourning those that were lost, but knowing they're in a better place. They firmly believe that something was there that day to protect them, and many of them believe it to be guardian angels. A mural called the Butterfly Effect, Dreams Take Flight, is painted on the side of the Dixie Printing Building on the corner of 15th and Main. So that's the story of the butterfly people of Joplin, Missouri. Whether you believe the beings that saved so many people that tragic day were angels, extraterrestrials, or something else is up to you. But it doesn't matter if you're Christian, Catholic, atheist, Muslim, agnostic, Buddhist, or something else. There's no denying that something or someone stepped in that day and spared the lives of all of those people. Personally, as a Christian, I believe them to have been angels. And what the people of Joplin experienced that day was a beautiful miracle. It was divine intervention. But this isn't the only time or even the first time a winged creature has been spotted around tragic events. Need I remind you about Mothman? Probably not. But if you need the reminder, Mothman was seen by countless people in Point Pleasant, West Virginia from November 12, 1966 to December 15, 1967. Although whatever it was was terrorizing the locals, many people still hold to the belief that the Mothman was an angel or a harbinger, giving the warning of the collapse of the Silver Bridge. The bridge collapsed during rush hour traffic and resulted in the deaths of 46 people. It was also reported in 1986, just before the Chernobyl disaster, that a winged man was sighted. And during the horrible tragic events of September 11th, 2001, there were reports of angels in the smoke and ash as the World Trade Center towers collapsed. There's incredible accounts from scores of onlookers that witness people jumping to their deaths to avoid the fires. These people claim to have seen flashes of light, like something had opened up in midair. It's believed by many that these angels were appearing to take the poor souls up to heaven. In 1978, a group of miners in Freiburg, Germany, witnessed a man standing close to the mine. At first, they thought he was wearing a trench coat until a couple of the workers walked up to him and realized the trench coat was actually a set of gigantic wings. This entity, whatever it was, 
let out a series of ear-piercing shrieks that reminded them of a train's emergency brakes and men all screaming at the same time. Naturally, and I don't blame them, all these guys ran away from whatever this thing was and only watched from a safe distance. This entity stood near the entrance of the mine and didn't move. So the miners didn't go into the mine that day. They just started to clean around the area, trying to keep busy, but also keep away from whatever this thing was. Around 8 a.m., that mine experienced an explosion and the explosion was so powerful, it shook the ground underneath their feet. When the miners ran to the mine, they realized the winged entity was gone and the mine was on fire. When the smoke cleared, it was revealed that should the miners have been inside that mine that day, instead of keeping their distance from whatever that thing with wings was, all 36 of those people would have died. This entity is now known as the Freeburg Shrieker and was the sole reason that the miners were saved that day. Then, in California, on October 25, 2010, a man named Tim saw what he thought was an angel too. He described this man as having wings, but not the wings of a bird, more like the wings of a butterfly. So, could it be possible that our depictions of angels having wings with feathers is completely wrong? With all these accounts being told of butterfly people, perhaps it's possible that the angels talked about in the Bible, the warriors of the almighty God of heaven, look more like men with butterfly wings than they do with bird wings, regardless of what these things actually turn out to be. I think it's a wonderful thought having divine beings, no matter what creed or belief you think they come from, that are watching over us. In a world that we live in now, that's full of destruction and evil, we need something wonderful to believe in, hope to hold on to. Psalms 9111 says, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Is that what happened in Joplin? Was it an angel or some other divine being that saved all of those people and all of those miners in Germany? Whatever your beliefs are, hold them tight. Good night, my creatures of the night. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. With all the scary stories we hear and all the monsters that stalk us from the shadows, I'm glad I could share stories of miracles and hope with you tonight. Thanks for listening. And remember, don't miss your chance to scream. <laughs>